Hello and welcome to Earthquake Tip number four. My name is Sharish Kumar Agarwal, Executive Director of BMTBC, and I'm going to present to you all about earthquakes, its concepts, terminologies, and how to construct buildings and structures to withstand earthquake forces through 32 earthquake tests, which are authored by Professor C.V.R. Murthy, mentored by Professor Sudhi Kumar Jain, and developed by IIT Kanpur in association with Building Materials and Technology Promotion Council, that is BMTPC. Through these tips, our aim is to spread right technical information in simple to comprehend language to our professionals who are in the field designing and constructing structures, especially architects and engineers. But before we start, let's make a pledge that any new structure we design or build must be earthquake resistant. When we talk about earthquakes, the natural question comes to mind whether the area in which I live or my building is located in is earthquake prone or not. This can be explained by seismic zones or earthquake zones. Our country is divided into four seismic zones, namely zone 2, which is least severe, to zone 5, which is most severe. And this earthquake tip will explain you seismic zones in India. Before proceeding to seismic zones, we need to understand why our country is prone to earthquakes and for that we need to understand the basic geography and tectonic features of the country. Remember, in the first uh, tip about earthquake occurrence, I told you that earthquakes come due to plate tectonic theory. Look at this figure which shows geographical layout of uh, our country and tectonic plate boundaries of uh, India. As you can see from this, India lies uh, in the northwestern end of Indo-Australian plate. This plate is colliding against the Eurasian plate. In fact, this Indo-Australian plate is going uh, under the Eurasian plate. And this gave rise to earthquakes in our country. There are three uh, chief tectonic subregions uh, India can be divided into. Number one, the mighty Himalayas uh, along the north. Two is the uh, uh, plains of uh, Ganges and other rivers that, uh, shown here, Indo-Gangetic Plain, Narmada Plain, uh, Mahanadi Plain, and the Peninsula. Let's look at this figure. Uh, which gives prominent past significant earthquakes which occurred in and around our country. Some of these occurred in the populated and urban cities and has caused great damage, whereas many went unnoticed as they occurred deep under the earth's surface or in relatively uninhabited places. Now let's look at this table. This particular table shows some of the damaging and recent earthquakes in our country. Most earthquakes occur along the Himalayan plate boundary called interplate earthquakes. Uh, but a number of earthquakes have also occurred in the peninsular region or the southern region of our country and those earthquakes are intraplate earthquakes. As you can see from this table, four great earthquakes, great means the earthquakes having Richter magnitude more than eight occurred in our country in a span of 53 years, that is from year 1897 to 1950. Each of these earthquakes caused disaster, but allowed us to learn about earthquakes and to advance earthquake engineering in the country. Like 1819, Kerch earthquake produced a three meter high uplift of the ground uh, for over 100 kilometers stretch, and uh, it was named as Allah Bun. The 1897 Assam earthquake caused severe damage as far as 500 kilometers away from the epicenter. This type of damage led to improvements in the intensity scales. Extensive liquefaction of the ground uh, was observed over the length of more than 300 kilometers during 1934 Bihar-Nepal earthquake in which many structures went afloat. It is also seen that the casualties during earthquakes depend on the timing of earthquakes. Casualties are expected to be high for earthquakes that strike during cold winter nights when most of the population is Indoor. Now, having studied this basic, basic geography and the earthquake history of our country, let's look at the seismic zone 
zones of our country. Uh, the varying geology of different locations in the country implies that likelihood of damaging earthquakes taking place at different locations is different. Therefore, seismic zoning map is required to identify those regions. As you can see from this figure, based on the level of intensity sustained during damaging past earthquakes, 1970 version of zoning map divided our country into five zones. That is zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, and zone five. If we need to relate them with the modified Merkley uh, intensity, the maximum modified Merkley intensity of seismic sh shaking expected in these zones uh, were in zone one, it is five or less. In zone two, it is um, uh, six. Zone three, it is seven. Zone four, it is eight. And zone five will have maximum modified uh, Mercury intensity of nine or more. Parts of Himalayan boundary in the north, the region which you see in red, and northeastern region and Kutch area uh, uh, in the west were classified in the jo uh, seismic zone uh, 5. Now let's look at uh, this figure. Now let's look at this figure. Seismic zoning map of seismic zoning map of India are being updated from time to time as we understand geology, seismic tectonics, and seismic activities in the country better. The Indian standard in 1962 provided first seismic zoning map of the country, which was again revised in 1967 and 1970. The latest seismic zoning map was revised again in 2002, and which is shown in this figure. And the entire country is divided now into four zones. Zone 1 is merged into zone 2, so we have zone 2, zone 3, zone 4, and zone 5. 1970, zone 1 is merged with zone 2. And also the seismic zoning map of peninsular India has been modified, like Chennai, which was earlier in zone 2, now falls in zone 3. Now what you see, the blinking uh, is zone 5, and as you can see, the northeastern region, some part of Himalayan region, and in west, the Bhuj region falls in zone uh, 5. It is called very high damage risk zone. Now let's move to zone 4, zone 4, zone 3, and uh, what you see, zone 2 uh, uh, is shown in blue. And this is the map, seismic zoning map of our country, based on Indian standard 1893. Uh, 2002. This national seismic zoning map of our country presents a large scale view of seismic zones in the country. Local variations of soil type and geology cannot be represented at this scale. And therefore, whenever we design a uh, important structure or when we deal with important projects such as nuclear power plants or dams, seismic hazard is to be done rather than relying on seismic zoning map of India. Also, for the purpose of urban planning and other development measures, seismic microzonation maps are being prepared, uh, which accounts for local variations in geology and soil. BMTPC has also prepared Vulnerability Atlas of India, and if you want to um, have access up to district level regarding seismic zoning map, you can visit uh, vai.bmtpc.org and uh, uh, get information up to district level regarding seismic zones of our uh, country. So that is all about uh, this tip. You can download this tip from uh, www.bmtpc.org website. The next earthquake tip, which is tip number five, will be on what are the seismic effects on a structure. Till then, thank you very much.